Hey kids, it's Tressa James, and on this Tressa James Explains, we're talking about Therizinosaurus. Now, first and foremost, I want to point out same rules as before, my first model here to my newest, so it's kind of a timeline, but also I want to point out that location. So many of you, I believe, think that my videos are shot in a closet. My uh, That wasn't a closet, it was a section of the room that was very narrow, so the two shelves were like side by side. Uh, actually, that wasn't a closet. Anyway, the point is, now I have a new room, a new place, new things, and what you can't see is it's going here, across, and like down that way too. There's some behind the camera as well. So it's a lot of them now. It's like a dinosaur room. That's awesome. Uh, if you want me to ever do a video where I like, because they're, they're in order by timeline, species, and location. If you want to see that in the video, let me know. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and mention it in the comments saying we want to see that. If not, I'll continue doing more videos. But speaking of this topic at hand, uh, a I think my furthest fan so far from Colombia and the name is Nachos Vergas. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it. My wife is bilingual and she helped me practice. It's Nachos Vergas requested the Rosinosaurus a couple weeks ago, and here we are. So the first one to point out with this animal is of course the name. And this is the example here of a claw, a copy of a claw. So in 1948, a Russian Mongolian combined expedition went to the deserts and, and found a claw like this, a few finger bones, other hip bones, other bones, and Nothing in the natural world was like this. Nothing really in general was like this. So the name Therizinosaurus means uh, scythe lizard. So think of the Grim Reaper, that image of the, you know, the skeletal face with the black robes, see that long thing. Well, scythe are used to cut wheat. And it's an analogy for that uh, fictional creature or being is that he's like taking your life like this. Well, these large claws reminded them of that. The species name, only one species name, is Shellophorus. Shel Shel that means turtle-like because the initial interpretation were these guys were like turtle-ish things. Uh, they weren't thought to be dinosaurs at first. And again, we didn't have most of the skeleton. So the idea of these things being like turtles was not uncommon because there's a lot of things that are like turtles are kind of in the fossil record. So a lot of groups we're not familiar with. But the importance of this to me is very simple. Um, many kids will ask me, like, or people in general, uh, about, about the newest dinosaur discovery. And quite frankly, I'm not super excited about the newest dinosaur discovery in that they're always finding new species, there's always papers being read. I'm not gonna have to constantly try to keep up. What makes the Rosinosaurus so fun to me is that this whole group was a new group. Now again, I mentioned they were found in 18, no, sorry, 1948. They were named officially in 1850, I keep saying 18, 1948 and 1954. It wasn't until the 1970s where the idea of them being dinosaurs even brought up. But for me, the big point was, even as my childhood, I was reading about this thing called Segnosaurus, and Segnosaurus, they didn't know they fit in because they had uh, hips, or at least ankles, like primitive long necks, He's, well, what we call prosauropods historically, now they're called sauropod morphs, yet they have claws like the Allosaurus type. So we didn't really know where these guys fit in, and so so it turns out what we now know is what we call Segnosaurus, and what we now know Cerezinosaurus have been kind of put in one group up for the most part. So they were a mystery group that in my lifetime, I've seen them like figure out where they fit in with more discoveries and research. So that being said, let's get started. The first one I'll point out is here, back when I was a kid, back in my day, we had a thing called the store of knowledge. Uh, it turns out they, they sold all kind of weird sciencey stuff and fun things. And I'm not sure they're in, around anymore. They may be online maybe. But uh, my first third data source is this, and it came with a little bike back, which is a cool little skeleton on there. Uh, and I mean, I just, at this point, I initially collected, because you'll see like 20 of one species and two of one species. When I was a kid, I went to herds, and as an adult, I just like, want the species, right, individuals. So uh, I, it, this marks a point in my childhood where I was no longer just collecting Jurassic Park dinosaurs. I wanted different, unique, you know, rare things. So this guy had these long claws here and this long neck. So I, you know, even though I had it and it fit on the theropod, I didn't know what it was, how it worked. It was a plant eater, so I knew that was important. Um, but I often call these guys uh, online Cretaceous pandas because like pandas, these animals are from a carnivorous stock and they eat plants, meaning that they are a theropod predator dinosaur lineage, but they these long claws and eat plants. Just like pandas are like bears that are, although most bears are omniv omnivores, but these guys are like purely herbivores. So like to me, that same kind of, uh, you know, like lifestyle tense, or they're like the vegan member of the family, or they, you know, uh, the vegetarian member of the theropod group. But also, as far as lifestyle goes, I would also give you an analogy of the giant ground sloth. There are these large animals with these pot bellies who had these long claws. So that's kind of what they're like, if you get that in your head, like a, a, a panda sloth hybrid wrapped in a chicken. Anyway, so 
This is my earliest one. Like I said, what, what's really great about it, three large claws, very unique, like I picked them up, I showed you earlier, and there's four toes. Now, all, all that I know of predatory dinosaurs have three, four facing toes and a little duke on the side. Thursinosaurus is unique that their, their, their fourth toe is on the ground, so they're actually walking with four toes. And the toy shows that. That's really awesome. I guess I'm really, that's really good. Um, my next, it was many years until I found the next one. Uh, it was a dinosaur called, a company called Dinosaur Valley and Toys R Us. That's where I ran into it. And they, the toys were more, I wouldn't say cartoony, but they were like less scientific. They were more like you come to a figure to fight with them, you know, kind of like that. Uh, so this guy's missing the beak. Uh, the feathers on the head are questionable. We do see feathers in their cousins, which we'll go over later. But in general, I mean, you, you, if you're gonna guess, guess good. Uh, four toes, three claws, they're really long claws. And again, I wanna point out a really fun fact here that when you see a dog, if you have a dog or a cat, or if anyone takes your, to the, uh, the vet and they cut the nails, like there's a part that if they cut it too short, it'll bleed. This is the claw, the blood vessels are cut of it. There's a thief going over this, making it sharper or longer. And it's been estimated that the claw may have been up to a meter long, or for you Americans, three feet. I say we Americans, I'm American. Uh, anyway, the point is, that's really neat. So the, to the claws have these really long, like Wolverine you know, claws, this thing stands out. But overall, like this guy had to have a beak, and that's why it throws me off. The colors are, you know, who knows? But the feather idea I'm gonna touch on later on with the family. My more my next serious purchase was at the Museum of Natural Science gift shop. I bought this one. So Safari uh, has like the little tight models that are you know solid figures. Uh, these are hollow, but they're bigger, so they're maybe like a cheaper price point. I think I bought it at seven or eight dollars. It's gonna be ten now. Uh, but the idea is that this guy was my first like serious large Thursinosaurus. Had the full feathers here, and again, it's based on his cousins. We have found other Thursinosaurus relatives in Asia and North America that had feathers, and we're like, okay, well, he might have feathers, but he's bigger. So, uh, big, this is a lot of topics in one video, but in general, the idea is uh, we see feathers in smaller dinosaurs usually. So, we uh, associate that with like, but they can't fly, so it might be insulation or maybe display. But the idea here is that for animals that are bigger, we wouldn't expect it. So, like Tyrannosaurus rex. We have no proof of feathers yet, or maybe, you know, at all. Uh, whereas uh, D-Long and New Tyrannus are smaller, so they have feathers, so, you know. Anyway, so we're not quite sure, but in general, the only thing I'll point out, there's four toes in this model, three claws, very good. They have the weird, the large gut. Also, the, the hip bones turn backwards. Uh, Thorazinosaurus right now are considered theropods, but they kind of, some people argue that they may be in the Ornistian group, like the uh, the bird hip dinosaurs, like the horn dinosaurs, duck bills, and ankylosaurus, and stegosaurus. Um, because of their hip structure. So like, it's still up for debate. I mean, I know that people were, were pretty set on like the theropods, but like, if I know science, someone might find a skeleton or somewhere in a paper that'll challenge all that. So we'll see. But in the meantime, the hips are really different. So there they are pointed out with this, these bones here. Now, the next one I want to point out was Toys R Us, rest in peace. Uh, Toys R Us basically uh, had the, the Schley, the, uh, I'm not saying Scheit, Scheit, it's a, I think a German company. And there's a third in source here. Now, one thing you point out is that yes, um, I always harp on dinos theropod dinosaurs being horizontal and having long tails. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of theropod, uh, sorry, Thorazinosaurus upright, if you're seeing here. Uh, their center of mass is is off from like a T-Rex or, or a raptor. So I'm not saying they stood up like us, you know, upright humans, assuming you're human watching this. But the idea is that we, you know, um, it would have been more like, at an angle instead of the horizontal, you know, like that. So this is a little extreme, but overall, you get your big, you know, your thriller claws, like you know, like that. Uh, this one actually went weird that there's a three toes going forward and a little duke claw. Now it is kind of going to the ground-ish, but not like it should. You know, we see the skeleton. Uh, what's really cool about this one is the jaw articulate, which is really cool. But also, it has a baby. So like they, they can separate sold separately, of course. Uh, they made a baby third their source, which I don't know if we found. I don't believe we found any babies. There were nests found, uh, about 13 nests, I believe, that were found together, meaning that they may have nested in the same area. Um, but there were no embryos found there, which suggests that maybe the babies had hatched or something. So, but we, so we don't know what they're parenting, but we do know that they had babies. I mean, obviously everything has babies, but the main thing is that the toy here is that that was really different. And I know uh, Shirley had a thing where they made out of baby or juvenile models of many animals. So that's kind of a neat thing to point out there uh, that they did. Now, I do like the, the feathers on the side of the tail, like these kind of outward feathers. We're seeing it on the first, the second one, the third one too. Um, in general, like that's when we see it, some birds today and do di di dinosaurs, so it's not, you know, I don't like to say it unless we know we have like, here's proof, like, here's an exact example, but 
sometimes you have to kind of speculate. And especially if you're a toy maker, so I get it. Um, it's not, you know, it's not wrong, so it's what we know it's wrong kind of thing. But don't just put anything, of course. Now, the next guy, I've got a dinosaur world. Uh, and if, oh, speaking of that, if you are in Texas or traveling near Texas or Austin, uh, if you want to see a life-size Thorazinosaurus, go to my friends in Bastrop, Dinosaur World. Sorry, Dinosaur Park. Dinosaur Park has Thorazinosaur model that's life-size. It's super awesome. It's like, it's huge. These are like, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't say that earlier. These animals are huge. They're like, like 10 feet tall. And it's, you know, it's a giant club. And there's, there's, there's two photo angles. There's one on the side. You can see a you know, profile. And there's one where it's like doing this. You can see it from like, you can, I have a picture on Facebook or something where I'm standing like this and it's like over me in the background. Really cool if you want to see one in person. And that's where I bought this one actually. So this is a company called Collect A and Collect A are, are, are newer on the block. Like Safari, Ashley, Popo, they've been around for a while. Collect A, I mean, if they ha they're kind of new. So most of their figures are going to be like this size and they're like different species, which is really fun for me. Uh, but they do have like a larger line. So this, this guy falls in that line. And again, huge claws. Now the head, uh, I can't say it's right or wrong. Actually, I mentioned earlier, don't, no beak for this guy, but we have not found Thursdaynosaurus skull. We have found their cousin's skull, but not their skull. So I can't be like entirely, it has a beak, but it should. Um, but in general, one thing to point out is that it has a three toes at the front when the back is kind of going further back than I prefer. But overall, great model. Like I said, uh, my only thing is that it balances like this, but there is some kind of warping. So I, I moved, so the heat, that's so I'm about to kind of unwarp and rework my figures. Anyway, so really cool. And I like, the, I like the coloring here. Again, nothing to do with science. I just like the way it looks. Uh, and the feathers on the back kind of like tufts here and there. And the really reason I like it so much is because, it's, I mean, until we know, some of these are guesses. So why not be make it cool? Why not make it cool? You know, like don't give it a neck frill and spit venom. <laughs> don't make up stuff. But if you're going to give it feathers, give it a cool pattern. It'll stand out. And this toy, all right? Uh, the last, second to last guy here is what I got from, I think, the museum gift shop. It's, um, a, I, I like this one because, you know, it has this a really big belly. Because when you're herbivore, you know, carnivores have tight guts. They, you know, they're packed in protein, their food, so they absorb the nutrients, pop the poop. That's why they have such strong copper lights, fossilized poop that preserve longer. Uh, where herbivores have, you know, different stomachs and fermentation and bacteria and all these things breaking down. So this guy has a big gut's really cool. Uh, I like to think of it like a, like a belly dancer, you know, like if you're in the Ren Fest, like the, ch -ch -ch -ch, you know, I don't know why, because I'm, I think of things weird, but uh, four claws, four feet, you know, four toes and a feet. They're the one, the two claws a little higher up than I prefer. Again, actually the first guy got that right earlier on. Uh, the claws, again, three claws, the feathers are here. We have not found Thursdaynosaurus with crew of feathers, but their cousins have them, so it might have. So again, that's still for debate. Um, but in, in general, I like this figure a lot. And the mouth, if I take it, like, you know, like that. So, and of course, Popo is known for doing like the big, powerful figures that are really awesome. You know, that's their whole thing. The final guy, if you go to Galveston, there's a on the Strand. If you're, if you're in Texas, uh, there is a uh, um, uh, a gift shop, a toy store. Sorry. And basically, I got the figure there. It has the three pills in the front. The back top claw is really, really small. It should be touching the ground. Don't know like that. But overall, there's the three main claws. Now the wrists here are in the uh, in the, what I call the Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's, I call it Jurassic Park wrists, where the wrists are like this. Again, they go side to side. They're palm to palm like birds. They're not like this. If you took a theropod dinosaur's wrist and you turned it this way, you would break the wrist, and it couldn't. It'd be like Deadpool. It couldn't do anything. So that's incorrect. I, I, I like it as this like Sergeant Major Chip Heather, like crew cut. That's kind of cool. I don't know. This is it's neat. I don't know why. Um, nothing in science. I just think it's neat. But like I said, the feathers, the different color spots, the you know, fanning tail, all of the cool features. So that's these guys in a nutshell. Um, now, let's talk about family tree, history, and uh, ecology. So I'm gonna put most of these guys to the side because I'm gonna use a Papa one for my, uh, my talking point and our giant claw, of course. The claw, the claw, you know, Toy Story reference. So, there's an source, so what's the big deal? So first of all, they found there was any source uh, in 19, 48 and named it in 1954. Fun fact, think about how many years that is, six years before finding it, digging it up, prepping it, examining it, and then displaying it. Like people think you just dig them up and put them in a the museum. Like no, a lot of steps and years and funding, you know, in that sense. Um, so anyway, there was a source, so it's a big deal. He has cousins. Now there's one from uh, China called uh, Biaposaurus, which is found in the Liaoning province. So if you know it's the, the feathered dinosaurs, feathered dragons, you know, D-Long, Guanlong, all those guys, not Guanlong, D-Long, Stachosaurus, 
uh, 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 that that strap has this guy here, and he has feathers. Um, and the first most American third in the story, Dr. Micus, which is in, I think, When Dinosaurs Rule of America. That's how I first saw it in, in a documentary, and then found a paper about it later on. Uh, these are not to scale, too. Although, these may be to scale, but not this guy. Uh, he's pretty big. And the most important one to me is one called Falcarius, which was found um, with, I think, Jim Kirk in Utah when working with this and, and others. Uh, James Kirk, Jim Kirk, I'm not sure which one he goes by. But uh, the idea that Falcarius is important because the Segnosaurs of past, we thought the Segnosaurs were a uh, 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 sauropod or relatives, maybe, because they're not quite matching up with theropods. Uh, Falcarius is like, no, they're theropods because he's an earlier, it's an earlier thor uh, therosinosaur, lower, lower Cretaceous, and his features line up more at raptors. And now, I'm not saying it's a raptor or a dromaeosaur, but it has more in common with, that, with the dromaeosaurs than it does like the sauropods in that, in that sense. So Falcarius is very, very important. We have one more from Mongolia too. So one thing to point out too with these therosinosaurs is that you might have two or three in the same environment. So um, it's not like you have just one per area, you know. But in general, that's the, there's his cousin. So when we find this guy with feathers, we find these guys more completely put together what he's like. And it's kind of like how if you were studying dogs and you, and you knew uh, you found partial skeleton of a dog, but then you find a wolf, a coyote, and a jackal, you're like, hey, they're kind of the same thing or similar things. So let's put them together and figure out how it looks. So it's just a bigger version of the, of the other animals. But again, it is the largest or last of the lineage. So there could be some, it couldn't have feathers at all. You know, it could be a totally different branch off. But in general, based on the family tree, it probably did, given its lineage and where it stands. Now, that being said, who do you live with? And the number of things these claws here, people are thinking, well, they're like giant sloths or pandas. They're reaching down and pulling plants down to their mouth. But also, there's a Tyrannosaurus rex as a cousin. And a, a, now, Tyrannosaurus rex has many Tyrannosaurus cousins, the Spadosaurus from weeks ago, Gorgosaurus and Brotosaurus living in North America. But it's more closely related to Tarbosaurus, which you're seeing here. If you ever on, I think it's Netflix, look up Dinosaur King, it's a story about Taurosaurus. It's a fictional story, but it's just the saddest dinosaur documentary movie ever. The point is, uh, here we have Taurosaurus, which uh, almost this is a Jurassic World model, which, I mean, I'm not super sciencey, but it's a large Taurosaurus. So I was like, yay, I have a smaller one over there. I might do a video on Taurosaurus at some point. But anyway, the idea of these animals are almost the same size, although it's obviously Taurosaurus is more muscular, be more, you know, feel. It can probably get up to the predator and fight it off like that. Like, look at that. That's that that dinosaur slapping action. I don't know. Uh, another cousin or other, another animal is living with is Gallimimus. So if you saw Jurassic Park one and all the Jurassic Worlds, they show these guys running in the field like ostriches. Gallimimus being the largest of their lineage um, of, their, of their branch. This is not to scale. This is a really big one from KB Toys. Uh, Sanchia, which is another thing. It's an ankylosaurus. And again, there's another ankylosaur. There's other Tyrannosaurus, other things in the environment. But this is what you're so we've seen the exact same strata. So if you're one of those kids who were like me, who outside of the Jurassic World play, you wanted your time period animals together, these are all in the same ecology. Uh, another example of one is called Monolycus, which I really love these little guys. Uh, Monolycus has one finger on each hand. Uh, these are thought to have eaten like termites and stuff. So there's, here we have this guy here. And let's see, who else do we have here? Yep. Uh, so these guys, Anokairus, which is a new mystery of paleontology because, uh, they just found these giant arms. This is his own video. They found these giant arms, and it turns out these are closer to the Gallimimus group when it's in the Mimids, but they're also kind of similar to the Therosinosaurus. So like maybe like, like they're in a they're branching off. I don't know. I, I don't want to say that part in too much detail. But the idea is in general they're in the same time period, and they're both kind of weird theropod things. And finally, we have uh, uh, I can't say it right, but properly, I think it's Ellie Morris. They say Tyrannosaurus. This is a Jurassic World one. Uh, so we have Tyrannosauruses or Tyrannosaurids um, are from. We know from North America, Tyrannosaurus rex. They're also found in Asia and like one or two in Europe. That, and they're supposedly finding Tyrannosaurus-ish stuff in South America, but it's coming out pretty soon. The main thing is it's known as a Tyrannosaur relative, and they're not all bulky like T-Rex. So what we're seeing here is a lot of theropods in this environment. But they had hadrosaurs, they had sauropods too. But again, these are its neighbors. So if you're playing with their dinosaurs and you want to be time accurate, these are your guys. These are your 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 models that you want to look forward to, right? Um, Anyway, so that being said, there's only one more thing I want to talk about and then we're going to be done and I'll do another video next week on who knows in my new room or for tours of the room, depending on how you, how you guys comment or, or subscribe. So last thing with the Rosanosaurus is its uh, overall placement is that again, it did not live with Velociraptors. I was from Mongolia, Velociraptor Mongoliensis, no, 
This is living in the Maastrichtian, which is the last, like what we call the terminal time of dinosaurs. It's between 70 and 66 million years ago. Velociraptor lived 75 million years ago. So there were dromaeosaurs, raptors living with therizinosaurs. There are just no toys of them that I'm aware of. So the idea is that, if, but in general, looking at the body plan, the risks are very similar, which is one of the arguments that made it made us see therizinosaurus as a theropod and not as a Parnistian or a sauropod, you know, early sauropod. So again, this is a really interesting animal and it's one of my favorite groups. I don't like love Therizinosaurus itself, like, oh, Therizinosaurus, but in general, it's like a really weird thing. And I like to talk about it because, you know, it changed the lexicon. I would always say, theropods are all carnivores, they all eat meat, or at least they're omnivores. This guy, we think, is primarily herbivore. So that changed everything, changed that. So, um, and it goes to show that there are probably still dinosaur groups that we don't know about. Um, meaning that we have bones here, there, and, and storages and collections are not dug up yet. And who knows what new family lineages are gonna be found in the next 10 years. That some, some student, you, I can see you right now, are watching this and you're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna see some bones that, because you know we teach you what we know, or at least what we mainly know or think we know, but there's always a lot of stuff we don't teach you because we don't know yet. We're looking at this skeleton, like, what is it like? What is it similar to? We don't know. And it might take 50 years for someone to figure out what it means, just like it did with our, our boy here. But that's the whole thing about science and discovery. So, I mean, it took so long to get my dinosaurs in this room and on these shelves. And who knows what new weird thing they're gonna find and have to buy some more shelves or something. I don't know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. But again, if you think other people should see this and know about how this is doing or in incentivize me to do more videos more timely, <laughs> please like, subscribe, and comment below because I wanna know what you're thinking and what you like. Is this too fast, too slow, too silly? Let me know because I'm doing this for fun. This is just, I like, I wanna share my collection with the world without giving it away. So, and, and I, like I said, I have a plan for it in the future, but until then, I wanna do it this way. So thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And this is my new place. This is, this is pretty awesome. This is like a cool, it's a cool space. It's, it's really my office. There's supposed to be a laptop here, but you know, it's, it's more dinosaur than office at this point. <laughs> okay, thank you, bye.